Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood on Stroke Assaulter. So I'm sorry I've been away for a month. Uh, I have made videos, I just haven't published them. Uh, so instead of publishing videos just after a month out of the blue, I thought I'd just let you know that I'm back. Or actually, I never really went anywhere. So because of my stroke, I have PTSD. Uh, and because of some other factors, which I can't go into, uh, I had a bit of a crisis sort of situation. So because of that, <clears throat> I needed to take a break. So I, I've taken the break. Um, in the last three weeks specifically, uh, I've been going to a day program in my local hospital every day. So I'd usually be pretty tired by the time I got home and I didn't want to half-ass something and just put something up as a placeholder. Uh, and it, I didn't have a lot of sort of me mental energy, right? Not emotional energy at that time. So for those of you that have been wondering, hey, where did this guy go? Let me just be honest. I needed help. Um, I took my own advice. Uh, I grabbed someone I trust and I love, and I placed him in an all-round bear hug grasp, and I said, we need to go to the hospital. And I went. Uh, I went to the hospital, uh, and I got the help I needed. It was difficult to have to look a loved one in the face and say, please, let's go do this. Difficult in the sense that at no point did I not trust that person. At no point was I concerned about what their reaction was going to be because I knew what it was going to be. It was difficult in the sense was I now have to turn control of my situation over to other people and I don't know what that outcome is going to look like. I've had a fairly decent outcome so far. I'm continuing on with other supports. Um, I will generate some content around the PTSD and a stroke situation. Um, at this moment, I'm not going to go into my specifics uh, for a number of reasons. And it's just easier for me not to go into the specifics about my situation. Uh, but I, I will generate some content about PTSD and stroke because it's a thing, at least in my world. And I'm probably going to do research and find that it's a thing in at least one person's world out there, at least one. And this channel is a bit of a vlog, right, uh, about my life post-stroke, uh, and it's some education. So maybe I can use, <clears throat> once again, my situation uh, and, and some of the pitfalls I've gone through, and by sharing my journey, by sharing my stumbles, by sharing my travels, by sharing my resources, I can make one other person's journey a better journey, an easier journey, uh, a journey that may not have the same snares and pitfalls and, and, and stumbles that I did. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm well. <clears throat> the, you're going to notice the next two videos. I've got longer hair and I've got a scruffy face. So I'm well. Uh, physically, I'm well. Emotionally, I'm well. Mentally, I'm well. Uh, so, the last three weeks, while I've been in the program I was, uh, it wasn't a secure program, so it's not like I was locked in the hospital. I came home every night. Um, the program I was in uh, was... beneficial, supportive, um, provided some opportunity for growth, uh, self-reflective, worthwhile. And it's a community support I didn't even know was in my community. So you may need to consider when you have your conversations with your general practitioner or other mental health care practitioner uh, your local hospital may have like what they call a psychiatric day hospital or, or just day program or whatever they happen to call it. Um, you know what? 
I took my own advice. I grabbed someone in a firm bear hug all around grasp, told them what I needed. You need to take me to the hospital. Uh, and it worked. I knew in, in doing that, I placed my own immediate outcome in the hands of the professionals in the hospital. Um, that could have, and I'm going to be realistic about this, that could have um, placed me into a secure unit for three days. I live in the province of Ontario in Canada. Um, if, the, if the staff in the hospital had determined that I needed to be um, held in the hospital, uh, they could have placed an order that would have kept me there for a while. That didn't happen. Uh, so the, the nurse I saw in the hospital in emergency, she was brilliant. I'm not going to name any names because that wouldn't be appropriate. Uh, and, and she was amazing. Uh, and then through her, I've got linked in with some other resources. And things are slowly getting better. I've also started attending a PTSD support group. Um, so I've got resources in play. They're going to help facilitate... Am I getting better? And and people are going to say, well, why did you just tell the world you have PTSD? Because I have PTSD. Why did you just tell the world you just had some kind of like relatively serious mental health emergency? Because I had a relatively serious mental health emergency. <clears throat> but why? The only way the conversation about mental health and its immediacy and its its delicacies becomes normal as if we engage in a meaningful, constructive, creative conversation that is meant to further the awareness of it, that is meant to further the education of it. I'm not here looking for a pity party. I'm not here looking for sympathy, because if, if you want sympathy, you can find it somewhere in the dictionary between shit and syphilis, right? I'm not here trying to promote a product other than wellness. I'm not here to promote an agenda other than education and, 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 and self-advocacy. So. If those of us that have mental health issues wish to have hashtag end the stigma, um, hashtag mental health is health, have those conversations. We, the mental health consumers, the mental health patients, we have to be the drive behind that conversation because it's the conversation about us that should involve us, right? So we should be the ones that are helping to facilitate that conversation. The only way the stigma truly ends, the only way mental health becomes part of the normal discourse is with The mental health self-advocacy from those of us that have the mental health concerns. Because you can listen to a doctor, be that a psychologist or psychiatrist or a social worker or a registered psychotherapist. Um, you can listen to them all day long and they, they can give you the academic, uh, the clinical, uh, you know, the educational, you know, the medical piece of it. I can also share some of the clinical piece of it. I can also share some of the medical piece of it. With a little bit of research, I can share with you some of the academic piece of it. But the most important piece that I can bring, or you uh, can bring to the table, is the experiential piece. 
what is it truly like to live with a mental health difficulty? And I don't care what that is. Is that schizophrenia? Is that bipolar or manic depressive? Is that schizoaffective? Is that anxiety? Is it a panic disorder, a personality disorder? In my case, PTSD. Um, you know, like the only way the conversation occurs is if people around us, whoever that may be, are willing to engage us in a conversation. So, if you want to have the conversation, you can reach me by my email address, which is strokeassaulter at gmail.com. You can reach me on my Twitter handle, which is in the description down below. You can reach me by leaving a comment down below. Right? But ultimately, if you find yourself in a position where you're having a significant, serious mental health event, and you know you need the help, right? find someone you trust. Place them in a firm, all-around bear hug grasp. Tell them you need help. Demand that they take you to the hospital. Right? Take you to a counselor. Take you to a therapist. Take you to your family doctor. If, if things are really completely dreadfully shitty, pick up your home phone, dial 911 or 999 or whatever it is in your area, and tell the dispatcher on the phone that, that you need help and the help you need. And then stay on the phone and, until that help arrives. Please, I implore you. For those of you that might be watching the channel and you think either you see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who appears to be immediately befuddled or confused, um, they've lost their sense of balance, someone's having vision problems, they can't see it at one eye, they only see in grayscale, they see a little dot in the world, the world's a bit blurry, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction. Someone has facial droop, a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, uh, inappropriate speech for situation or context. Someone who uh, can't smile equally, effectively, or at all. Someone who um, um, has uh, the inability to stand unaided or has general body weakness or weakness on the one side. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.